I'm finally a believer. Victor Webinyama might just be him. After a roller coaster summer league, I really wasn't sure. He's supposedly a world class defender, someone even better than Rudy Gobert, but he was out there getting baptized by a career G Leaguer just last summer. And now that G Leaguer is unemployed. He looks lost, he looked timid with the NBA speed, and he even said it himself, he had no clue. What was going on out there? I didn't really know what I was doing on the court tonight, but it's... Uh... And honestly, I respect that. You rarely hear that type of answer or honesty from these NBA players. Next game, he put on a show. 27 points, 12 rebounds, and 3 blocks, looking absolutely dominant. But at that time, I was still unsure about him because, yeah, it's just summer league. And we've had plenty of stars have great summer leagues or even terrible summer leagues. Just look at Trey Young. He didn't even score a point in his first summer league game. But even when her shot isn't falling, you can still tell when a player is good. You can just feel it. But after those two summer league games, you still had questions. You still weren't sure. But... Watching these preseason games, there are no more questions because I saw something I have never seen in my 15 years of watching NBA basketball. And if you were watching these games too, you saw it with me. We saw a seven foot four guy coming off a screen on the perimeter to shoot a three point shot or a midi. Not as a screener, but as a ball handler. That is absolutely insane. These are typically plays that are ran for Kevin Durant, and he's knocking them down just as efficiently. For the field, he's shooting above 60% so far and around 30% from three. It's not great, but hopefully eventually he can make his opponents respect that shot. And once he starts knocking those down consistently, he'll be a true three-level threat. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, he definitely has his Intimidator badge set to Hall of Fame. Another player I really liked was this one right here. You can see him guarding Thomas Bryant. And Thomas Bryant has the court vision to see an open guy out on the wing. But all Wimby needs to do is take a small step to the side and raise his other arm. And he's applying pressure to two players at once. This type of length pause is going to give him so much defensive impact. Hey, if you like talking hoops, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about Wimby. I respond to everyone. But there is one thing. I'm worried about with the Spurs game planning to keep Wimby from matching up against centers. It is completely out of your control how the opposing team wants to guard Wimby or if they want to attack Wimby. For example, okay, on offense, you would want Wimby to be bringing the center out towards the perimeter because of how skilled and quick he is. But what if they don't? What if they're playing someone like the Grizzlies and they stick JJJ on him and let Steven Adams come help side once again to the paint? There are a good amount of big wing defenders who have the size to give decent defense on Wimby and who do have the footwork to keep up with him on the perimeter. So I can definitely see teams giving him tough perimeter jump shots and letting him have those, especially if he's only shooting 30% from three. And a lot of these threes weren't very contested in the preseason. We currently know Wimby can't force his way into the paint, especially in a half court setting and even more so if he's the ball handler. His post game is not great. And we can contribute that to a lot to his size and his thinness. So if you're a team who has a big versatile wing, like a JJJ, a Jaden McDaniels, a Draymond Green, or even a Ben Simmons, any team with a large wing and a decent center can take that pain away from him almost completely. Unless he can bring that three-point shooting percentage closer to a 36, 38% from three, this is going to be a problem. You're going to see a lot of teams game plan against Wimby this way. And the other side of the ball, the Spurs said that he will not be guarding centers. Then who is? It's going to be Zach Collins? Yeah, he's a decent role player. No disrespect to Zach Collins. I like him. But he is definitely not a Giannis or Embiid stopper. And I know pretty much nobody is. But what if these teams want that Wimby matchup? For example, if I'm the Bucks, what if I want to target Wimby? How many times can I get Wimby into a screen action to get Giannis onto him? How long can you be in a screen action guarding guys like Embiid, guarding guys like Giannis before you're tired and you're out of gas? And do you have the mental strength to be able to see yourself getting dunked on maybe one, two, three times, maybe even an and one and still perform your best on the other side of the court? We don't know yet. We don't know how strong his mentality is currently. And I think there's only so much hiding you can do. And we won't really know what he's capable of until he goes up against these elite bigs. And I'm definitely looking forward to see how it goes. It'll be an interesting matchup for sure. But as of right now, Wimby has definitely put the league on notice.